Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. We are again uh, continuing our coverage here in the way that the world has changed in the one year since the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus uh, crisis a pandemic. And one of the biggest impacts had been felt in the sports community, not just uh, one year since the NBA suspended their season back in March of last year, but also the way that we've seen a lot of Americans turn to extreme outdoor sports, including skateboarding, if you want to call that extreme. Uh, and for more on that, I want to bring on our next guest here, a man that is directly related to Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk himself, who's also now very busy with a new series uh, co-hosted here by GoDaddy, talking about entrepreneurship. And Tony, I mean, there's a lot to get in here uh, with you because, you know, we can talk about the way that you kind of navigated the changing entrepreneurship around Birdhouse, your skateboarding brand. But uh, I guess we'll just start with kind of how sports specifically skateboarding has been impacted by the pandemic and what you've seen through your brand and your uh, expertise in that area. Uh, how crazy has the last year been? Uh, it has been a big surprise uh, in terms of interest and sales and skateboarding. I, I understand it because people were stuck in one place and they were looking for new outlets. And I feel like there are there's a population of people that have always been somewhat curious or interested in skateboarding, but never had the incentive and, and them being stuck in one place was their incentive. And it's something you can do on your own. You don't need a team. You can go to the skate park and um, there is a community there, but at the same time, it's an individual pursuit. And so I get it, but it, it was, it was very surprising that it took a pandemic to sort of get skateboarding over the tipping point. Tony, let's talk about this GoDaddy series that you've launched. Um, you know, in many ways, extreme sports, particularly skaters, have, have been quite entrepreneurial over the years, whether it's on the content side or the branding side. What prompted you to, to try and wrap this up into a series? Um, well, I, I felt like there are a lot of entrepreneurs in our field of action sports. And um, it's such a DIY attitude of what we do anyway. So to see, to actually follow these athletes and businessmen trying to, to make a career out of their passion, <clears throat> I, I just, <clears throat> excuse me, I identified with that very closely and I thought it'd be fun to share their stories and also to lend my expertise and, and my experience along the way. Yeah, people might not know a lot about that, that kind of expertise and all the stuff that you've learned over your years <laughs> in the business community through Birdhouse and your other endeavors. Uh, talk to me about about that, because I, I actually didn't even know that skateboarding kind of as a concept and, and the excitement around it kind of, I guess, tailed off in the early 90s before resurging later in the 90s. Talk to me about that and, and what you've learned over your career in business. Well, yeah, I think skateboarding had a, a small boom in the 80s. I mean, for people who were in it, we thought it was the biggest thing in the world because we were making a living doing something we never imagined having a career as. But uh, the interest waned, the skate parks were closing, and then somewhere in the 90s, skating came back into the limelight because of X Games, because uh, street skating had emerged, and then our video game series blew up in the late 90s, and I feel like that's when skateboarding uh, set a foundation that was here to stay, but I would say over the last 20 years, it, it has some, some uh, ebbs and flows in popularity, and now we see it front and center. We see it in so much of pop culture, in marketing, and now in the Olympics. And so I, I sense that skateboarding will be um, something that kids choose to do as readily as they choose any team mainstream sports. Yeah, I know Akiko has a question on the Olympics that she'll want to sneak in here. But before I let her do that, you mentioned the video game. And Tony Hawk Pro Skater is forever, I think, one of the greatest video games and will forever be, in my mind, as one of the first that I really enjoyed. Uh, now sold more than $1.4 billion in terms of games uh, from that release back in 99. But I guess if I can ask you one more business question tied to all that and the success you've seen, we always like asking people who have had a career in that kind of their biggest maybe lesson or takeaway. I know you talk about a lot of it in the GoDaddy series, but maybe your biggest mistake that you'd go back and change uh, in your career? <laughs> um, I think the biggest mistake I made, well, just in terms of, of financially or uh, trying to start a business was getting into something that was way beyond my expertise. Uh, we tried to start a high-end denim brand in the early <laughs> 2000s. And uh, the designs were great. The, the, um, the artist that we got was, was really... Uh, well respected, but 
it, it just was way beyond what we knew how to do and, and ended up costing us quite a bit to try to fund it, to try to keep it going. And, you know, who knew back then that nobody wanted to spend $200 on jeans? Tony, you've, you've had to wait uh, an extra year uh, for the big debut of uh, skateboarding as an Olympic mm -hmm. sport. But, but I'm curious, as you look to Tokyo, um, what do you make of the prospects of the U.S. team, number one? And where does this elevate the sport? It's already such a global sport, but to be included in the Olympics, what particular, what specifically do you think that means? Um, I think it it is has a lot of potential for the growth of skateboarding internationally. I think that in the places where you see it, especially in um, obviously in Northern America, in South America, Australia, uh, and in, in a lot of Europe, skateboarding has already set its its place there but now that we're going to have this international stage i think that we're going to see it in more unlikely places um places like africa and in china and thailand and places like that so uh that's exciting to me um you know i have i have a bit of a mixed feeling obviously about the olympics because i feel like we were never looking for their validation and if anything they need our cool factor for their summer games to bring in a younger viewership. So I have that sort of cavalier attitude, but at the same time, I see the benefits of it. And I'm excited that um, these places where people have been discouraged from skating will now be embraced for it. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that uh, because it does change the way that the Olympics can try to brand itself, to your point. Uh, who do you think has the um, inside track here? If we're talking about who is a gold medal favorite, which countries are you looking oh, at? Oh, wow. Uh, I, I think that, well, I think the U S obviously has a, a very good team. Um, we've got Nyjah Houston on the street side, who is, uh, a technical wizard and, um, other, other countries, I think, uh, oh, that's a good question. There's, there are a couple of really good skaters from France and Australia. Um, Shane O'Neill is one of them. Um, Arlene Giraud and, uh, I don't know. It's going to be exciting. I think, I think that the, the fun thing about it is when it's actually, you see it on TV, there are plenty of people that watch skateboarding and they think skateboarding is just people trying and failing and stuff over and over. And when you see the level of competitors that they will have, you'll see that these tricks that seem impossible or only possible on video games that they have consistently and they could do it in competition. All right, Tony Hawk. Uh, once again, thanks again for coming back on. Everyone can catch him in that GoDaddy series. Go forth. Uh, for more entrepreneurship tips, as well as, uh, I just got to say, everyone out there, it's a phenomenal follow on Twitter, Tony Hawk. I've enjoyed uh, the jokes you've been making <laughs> out there, too. Uh, thanks again. Thank you very much. Uh, Tony Hawk.